Now let's talk about what this means. So initial value problems for velocity and position. Remember with derivatives, we start at, let's say f of x equals distance. And if we take the derivative, we get velocity. And when we take the derivative of that, we get acceleration. What do you think happens with integration? With integration, it goes the other way. If we start with f of x equals acceleration, then the integral of f of x is equal to velocity. And I'm just going to write this as the integral of the integral is equal to distance. It goes backwards. Suppose an object moves along a line with a known velocity, v of t, t is greater than or equal to zero. Then its position is found by solving the initial value problem. The derivative of, this is actually the derivative of position, they call s position, is equal velocity. If they tell me that the initial position, this is the position when t equals zero, we'll call that s sub zero. It's the, that's where we're starting. If f of x is, a continu is continuous in the domain a, b, so we have this function, uh, let's say it's continuous, here's a, let's call this b, and really what I want to do is I, I want to integrate or find the area under this curve between A and B. Now, this curve goes on forever, probably. I, I didn't say it's necessarily stopping at any position, right? This goes on forever. And if I just want to find the area between A and B, first I want to integrate or find the antiderivative, same, and then I want to plug in those values and subtract them. This would be called, this right here is called a definite integral. A particle is moving with the given that, find the position. So we're starting with acceleration and we're given some things. I'm gonna start with acceleration and I wanna integrate my acceleration with respect to T. And I'm going to use, this is just the power rule. Power rule says if I have the integral of x to the n, that becomes x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. If I get 10t plus 3t squared over 2 minus 3t to the third over 3 plus c. Let's simplify this. And this is actually giving me my velocity. And it's v of zero equals two. Everywhere t equals zero, well, t equals zero there, there, and there. So this equals c. And we know that equals two. Now we know that c equals two. I do it one more time. I have my V of T, which is 10 T plus three halves T squared minus T to the third plus two. And again, I'm gonna integrate this and I get 10 times T squared over two plus three halves times T cubed over three minus t to the fourth over four plus two t plus my constant. If I simplify that, I get five t squared plus t one half t cubed minus t to the fourth over four plus two t 
plus C. And this really, because this was my velocity, now this is gonna be my distance. And it also tells me what S of zero is. Since S of zero equals five, I get S of zero equals, well, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero. It just equals C because all of these are times zero. So I get C and my C equals five. Now my final answer is S of T equals 5t squared plus one half t to the third power minus t to the fourth over four plus 2t plus five. And that would be my distance formula.